All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Getting Technical uh, with your favorite folks here at J.R. Peters, uh, Dan Gillespie and myself, Mason Day. And today we're going to be talking about stock solutions. And no, not the stock market. That's a whole nother mess in its entirety. But we're talking about concentrated stock solutions uh, for your grow, you know, talking about injectors, you know, what are concentrates and what is the point of making them? So Dan's going to cover all that. And I'm here to ask the questions that have been burning for you. So Dan, what is the point of making stock concentrated solutions? Yeah, Mason. So a, a concentrated stock solution, first of all, it, it, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a highly concentrated fertilizer solution that's going to be diluted before we feed our plants with it. Um, and the, the point of making them, the reason you know that a lot of growers will want to make these stock concentrates is really to make things more convenient. So uh, uh, just weighing out uh, fertilizer at one point and making a highly concentrated solution eliminates the need to weigh fertilizer uh, to pour the grams out and weigh it on a scale every single time you need to mix up fertilizer, right? So it's really just convenience is the whole point of it. And, you know, I think another point there is too, if you're using an injector, it's, you don't need to measure it either. Um, exactly. All the right. injector so, does the work for you. Bingo. So, Got it. So how concentrated are we talking here? Yeah, Mason. Um, so I, I typically like to go with the 100 times concentrated solutions just to make the math easy. Um, so to create a 100 times concentrated solution, all you do is take your normal final dilution ready to feed rates and multiply that a hun by 100, right? Um, so for example, with the 321, we're mixing about 3.6 to 3.7 grams per gallon. To make a 100X concentrate there, it would be 378 grams, right? Um, so the 100 times concentrate is also the mixing rate that is typically going to be associated with the 1 to 100 or the 1% injector setting as well. So it also makes things easy on that end as well. Yeah, and I'll, I'll highlight, it is important to check your injector settings while, you know, there are some standards out there. I've seen some weird things if you're getting injectors that maybe are from other places or you're getting some interesting injectors, be, be sure to check those rates. Um, but when it comes to concentration, you know, can you mix more concentrated than that? You know, one, like 100 times concentrated? Yeah, you, you can mix more than 100 times concentrated, Mason. Um but as you start to exceed 200 times concentration, you, you need to start considering what, what is the limit of solubility for each formula. Um, and that's going to be different for each formula, right? Because it's, it's a function of the raw materials that are used to make up that formula. So you do need to consider the limit of solubility um, if you're mixing anything more than 200 times concentrated. All right. So that makes sense to me. Uh, you know, obviously high school chemistry, you can only put so much uh, into a solution before you start seeing it at the bottom. And, you know, yeah. think about iced tea, yeah. right? Iced tea or lemonade. You can put so much sugar in sugar. before at the bottom, there's just yep. a bunch of gunk. Um, so that makes sense. What about number of injectors and stock tanks? Because I know that you can't necessarily mix certain things together in a concentrated form. Yes, Mason, good question. So when you are making concentrated stock solutions, there are some precipitation and solubility issues and compatibility issues that you need to take into account. So this, this only applies to concentrated stock solutions. So when you're making concentrated stock solutions, you cannot mix calcium containing fertilizers with fertilizers that contain sulfates or phosphates. So the Calcium needs to be separated from sulfur and phosphorus. So when calcium and sulfur are mixed together at a high concentration, um, you actually get gypsum formation, which is essentially drywall. And, and we know that's not going to be soluble, right? Um, and then when you mix the calcium with the phosphates, you're getting rock phosphates. You can sometimes get the calcium and phosphorus in there together if you play tricks with the pH, but uh, it's really pretty complicated. Um, so the general rule of thumb, you want to keep your calcium in a separate stock container and separate injector, and that should be separated from all your sulfate and phosphorus containing fertilizers. So typically, you know, you might for Jack's 321, for example, 
you have one injector and one stock container for your 51226 Part A and your Epsom salt. The Epsom salt can go in there with the Part A. And then you have one injector that's completely separated for the 1500 Part B. All right, cool, cool. So that's kind of, that covers, you know, as far as injecting like the stuff here at Jax. You know, the other thing we get a lot of questions about is what about silica or silicon? How do you how do you get that into the mix and when do you inject it? Yeah, so if, if you are using silica, that's another one that is going to require its own stock container and its own injector head. Um, again, this only applies to concentrated stock solutions. At the final dilution, ready to feed strength, everything can be mixed together. But silica, similar to calcium, and that it needs its own um, injector and stock container. Um, if you don't have access to multiple injectors for this, sometimes I recommend rotating. You can sometimes take out the hose and just rotate the hose and maybe just apply a weekly drench type thing. Um, that's a good option if you don't want to add a whole other injector head. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, silica is going to be soluble up to about 50 parts per million silica in the pH range of typical nutrient solutions. Um, and you'll see most recommendations for silica are going to be about 20 to 30 parts per million for a continuous liquid feed and 50 parts per million silica for uh, um, weekly applications. All right. Sounds great, Dan. You know, that was a quick one and a great one on, you know, covering concentrated stock solutions. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad that we're helping take everybody's grows to the moon. And uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of Getting Technical. So until then, we'll see you. Good stuff, Mason. See you. Thank <laughs> you.